Welcome everyone. This is our Wednesday Wisdom where we go over tips, tricks, and information on band instrument repair. It is the new year, so happy Neopad year to you. Uh, make sure you take that hashtag above my head to the side of Ryan's head and put that in the comments below. That's going to enter you into a drawing for 10% off any of the courses that we have coming up this year. And we have quite a few coming up this year right now. Uh, January 19th, a day course on soldering and cleanup. And of course, in February on February 16th, we have a, another day course. This is, so the day courses are virtual, so you can watch them from anywhere in the world. And if you are a technician, whether you're doing student repairs or professional repairs, you can get in on the key fitting course. And of course, at the end of February, we have our basics done right. So that's going to be an in-person course here at musicmedic.com in North Carolina. It's a beautiful time of year here. So if you are in the frigid north, come on down and enjoy some uh, temperate weather and get some saxophone work done as well as March 2nd, we have another virtual course and the saxophone modifications course goes over a lot of things that we can't do on Wednesday Wisdoms, a lot of more advanced techniques and topics. And of course, we also have March 6 through 9, uh, the advanced saxophone repair course, and that's going to go through some modifications and other advanced techniques. So if you are interested in mods and you want to see these in person or try the techniques out in person, the March 6 through 9 course, uh, advanced saxophone repair course, a couple days, and that's going to be very good. Uh, to get into that. Yes. Uh, so, Ryan, we yes. are in the Neopad year. We're happy Neo year to you, sir. Happy Neopad to you, sir. Let's get right into how to install Neopads on a saxophone. Uh, first thing we have to do is... Uh, well, first off, you got to get some Neopads. You, that that uh, would be true. That would be, that would be the first. Number one, <laughs> Neopads. Uh, you got to get them. Uh, and where do you get them? Here. That's right. Yep. Um, so the first thing we have to do is prep our pad cup. All right. um, you'll notice this one right here. Here's my demo pad cup. I've kind of done some prepping stuff in the middle. Soup. Big thing is cleaning out all the yes. old glue and adhesive and all the gunk that's built up over the years. Uh, hot glue, shellac, you know, contact cement. Who knows what's in there? Uh, you got to clean that out. There are a couple different ways you can do that. A lot of people will use an old pad slick. Scrape it out. Some people use a scraper. This is the world's best scraper. Um, scrape it out, um, you know, get in there, clean it up. You can use some kind of solvent. Uh, and I will say this stuff right here that we sell, this Uncure, uh, which goes for a lot of our uh, uh, super glues, uh, is kind of a debonder. A lot of times I'll use this on my fingertips when I glue them shut. Mm -hmm. um, this is great for cleaning the center. And this is really what you want to do is clean that center portion right there because that is where our spud uh, for our Neopad is going to be actually glued to. Um, one thing I will say, be careful with this because this will take lacquer off Ew. very easily. Uh, so you just want to use it sparingly just on the inside of the pad cup. Good tip. Don't wipe the whole thing down. Uh, but that would be one thing. You notice this is nice and clean as well. Uh, there are mechan or, or automated I guess, uh, means to do this rather than just scraping it in there. And you can use this bristle disc, which I believe is 120 uh, grit. 80 grit. 80, dang it. I knew. 80, I, okay. 80 grit. Uh, 80 grit. So this is about 80 grit. Um, and you'll notice I did stack them. There, mm -hmm. I think, are about three or four um, you know, bristle discs stacked on. And this gives me a wider surface to kind of clean up. And you can clean up most of this using one of these bristle discs. Okay. Um, so that would be the, the first step is cleaning inside. The second step would be making sure that the pad cup itself is round and level. Not so much level, doesn't matter as much, uh, but the big thing is this rim has to be completely round. If I have a pad cup that, let's say, first off, here's a nice pad cup and you can see I have two sized Neopads. One is a 33.5, and you can see that fits pretty good. We do want a little bit of space, and we'll talk about the fit here in a little bit. And the 34, you can see, will work as well. I do have a little bit of a space around there, but if I have a dent, let's say there's a dent, there it is. Ooh, yeah. Right on the that. bottom, right there, there's my dent. Mm -hmm. Okay, if I put that pad in, that was right at the borderline of being maybe a little too big. You can see now, it doesn't even want to go in there, okay? And this is true for traditional pads that you're gluing in. You want to make sure that this pad cup is nice and round. So any dents you want to remove, okay? I find the best thing to do uh, to remove those dents is our pad cup and tone hole pliers, 
Okay, you'll notice how those work. The curved jaw, this one right here, is going to be on the inside of the pad cup. And then you can just kind of work your way around, squeezing, reforming. Maybe you have to do a little bit of bending. But there we are, back to having a mostly round pad cup. All right. So that is very, very important for the fit of Neopads. So let's talk about, I guess, the fit. Yes, Ryan. I think fitting the pads is something that a lot of... Uh budding and professional technicians need to, to know about. Absolutely. So I've got, I've got a couple of different sizes of Neopads that I'm going to try here. All right. So this is the, the pad I'm, or the pad cuff I'm going to be putting Neopads in. So I have, let's go with one that I consider to be the Goldilocks of Neopad fit. So this would be, I consider to be a just right fit. What I'm looking for is a little bit of space completely around the pad cup. The main reason why we want that is we want this pad to be able to tilt back and forth. And if it's too big and if that leather rubs against that the, the inside of the pad cup, it'll make it tough for that self-leveling aspect of the Neopad to actually happen. Um, so that fits pretty good. Let me go to one that maybe is a little undersized. Okay, you Ooh. can see that is quite a bit undersized. If this were a traditional pad, there'd be shellac everywhere. Yeah. It would be a mess. And this, I would consider this to be a hack job. But with Neopads, you do want a little bit of space. Okay. And we'll talk about coverage here in a second. Okay. Now let's see one that's maybe I would consider to be a little too big. Okay. Let's say this were a traditional pad, a non-Neopad. This is the fit that I would want. I would want something a little snug that I have to kind of pop it in there. Okay, if I'm using traditional pads, a lot of heat, that's going to contract everything. It's going to get a little bit tighter. So eventually this will be a perfect fit. Where Neopads, this is a bad fit. Mm. You can see it doesn't even want to go in there. There's definitely not going to be any kind of tilting back and forth. All right, so we want to go ahead and go with the Goldilocks of pad cups. So we've talked about fit. Okay, typically if you're going to be measuring your pad cups, you want at least two millimeters on either side of the pad. So usually bumping it down a half size. So if this measures to be a 30.5, I'm going to be using a 30. Okay. okay. So there it is right there. So you want that slightly undersized. Now here is a tip though. If let's say you measure it and it's a, a 29.3, you can use a 29. Okay. okay. Or a 29.4. As long as you have that little bit of space all the way around the pad so that it's able to tilt back and forth. Now, Ryan, can the pad touch a little bit? Can it rub a little bit? Just a little bit. Just okay. a little bit. If it interferes so much that it, there's a lot of pressure that it has to self-level, it's too much. But okay. it can touch a little bit. It's okay. Okay. All right. Very good. So. Let's talk about the spuds. Yes, the spuds. Now, the nice thing about... Neo pads, you can see right here, they come in or they're available in different spud heights. So we have a standard spud, which when you buy Neo pads, there's a spud already installed in it and it's a standard spud. Mm -hmm. You can also get a medium spud, which is a little bit taller. The standard spud is about a half millimeter uh, tall. The medium spud is about a millimeter tall and the tall spud is about a millimeter and a half. And it depends on really your pad cup. Okay. Okay. the depth of your pad cup. If you're working on something, let's say like a Selmer uh, mm -hmm. that has fairly deep pad cups, you may need to go with the tall spud. Okay. okay. Other vintage horns may have very shallow pad cups. In that case, a standard spud will work. Okay. So you kind of have to tell or determine what size spud. So let's take a look at a couple different sized spuds. So this one right here, this is a 30 and this is a standard spud. So when you order a Neopad, this is what you're going to get. Okay, you can see the spud is already snapped in the back. All right. And we'll talk about that, snapping it in mm -hmm. and out okay. here in a second. So here we are, and let's see. We get Yeah, we get a little bit of, of tilt back and forth. That may be enough, but let's see what it looks like with a medium spud. So here is a medium spud. The first thing you'll notice, that pad protrusion is a little bit more. So it does stick out a little bit more. And you can see we do have quite a bit more tilting back and forth, left and right. All right, now for fun, let's take a look at a tall spud. There it is. Oh yeah, there's quite a bit of pad protrusion and you can see it really moves, okay? Now, Ryan, what would we use the tall spud 
as opposed to the standard that comes with the pad? Um, if the pad cup is uh, very deep. Okay. Yeah, very deep pad cups, you would use your tall spud. Um, also, if you need a little bit more of that wiggle, um, I know the um, Kings, in particular, King Super 20, the bottom of their pad cup is kind of pyramid shaped. Okay, mm -hmm. reverse pyramid shaped, I guess. Um, so it has kind of a dip to it. I would recommend using the tall spud. That's going to give you enough of that protrusion, and it's also going to allow the pad to tilt back and forth. Okay. So I think we've determined that we are going to be using our medium spud. All right. Can we also show them the pin? Absolutely. Let's take a look. We got a picture here so they can really see it. You notice right there in the center, that little circle right there is highlighting a very neat feature on these spuds, which is this pin. Okay. This pin on this spud will line up with the back of a pad. And you'll see right there it is. You see that slot. Okay. That pin will actually snap into that slot. Um, and what this does is prevents the pad from rotating around 360 degrees. Mm. Okay, so it kind of keeps it where it needs to be. And this is helpful if the pad maybe doesn't have, you know, exact, uh, you know, dry fitting over the tone hole. Uh, maybe it's a little off center. For whatever reason, this pad will not spin. Okay, it still will tilt in all directions, 360 degrees, but it will not spin. Okay, so when you're installing the spud. Let's say you got some that had the standard and you need to change it out to the medium. Mm -hmm. Okay, Very easy. So I'm going to grab my spud and what I'll do is I will orient this. This spud is facing north, okay, directly at me. And then I'm going to take my pad and you can see I have the slot facing north-south. I'm going to line those two up and they snap in just like so. And you can see mm. there is my little bit of a gimbal, but the pad will not spin 360 degrees. Okay, so we talked about the spud, we've talked about the, the pin, we've talked about the slot, the slot, we've talked about sizing. We haven't talked about installation yet. You'll notice, Rich, there is no shellac. Uh, there is no heat source. Well, uh, okay, I know but, it's confusing. Uh, but uh, pad slick. You There's need, nothing. You There's you no pad, pad slick. slick. No you pad prick. Nope. Uh, Try again. Hot glue. None. Really? Absolutely not. The only thing you really need to install is this stuff right here. Okay. And this is what we sell. This is uh, tire glue or it's rubberized super glue. Okay. Um, and you use just a little bit, just a little dab on the back of the actual spud. And then you install that to the pad cup, a nice clean pad cup. And this works. Okay. And I know this works because we've extensively tested it out. We were talking about it the other day and I was corrected. I said, withstood a million whacks. We have our pad whacker machine. We put eight hours a day. It's just bum, 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 bum. And I was corrected. It's actually three million whacks. Okay. That's a lot. Three million whacks. Uh, that is a lot of That's practice. more than John Coltrane pressed is, his keys down. That's right. Know, yeah. Like even, yeah, yeah. no, it's so, a lot. This stuff does work. That's, Don't fact check me on that, by the way. <laughs> yeah. No fact checkers. Uh, you're going to get called out. Uh, so this stuff right here, and just a little dab will do, and I'll show you okay. exactly yeah. how much. Okay. You ready for this? Here we go. You might miss it. That's it. Beep. Okay, really? let me try it again. Let me hear it. There it is. Beep. I've installed two pads. Ready? Here's, here's three pads. Ready? There it is. Beep. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> sound effects not included. <laughs> um, but this is the stuff that you're going to use to actually install the Neopad. So I'm going to pick out my pad cup. There it is right there. Everything's clean. Pad rim is nice and level. I've checked my size of Neopad. I've checked the clearance and I've checked for this self-leveling, which is why we're going with the medium base. So you're ready for this? I am ready. Careful. Don't blink. You may, you may miss it, especially if you're a slow blinker. <laughs> okay. So... Here we go, just a little dab on the back. And now what I will do is when I put this in to make sure that it is completely centered, I will keep my fingers oriented in a north, south, east, west position. Okay, And I'll tilt or, or uh, yeah, tilt that pad north, south, east, west. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing this to make sure there's plenty of clearance all the way around. Remember, you do want space uh, between the pad cup rim and the actual pad itself. And this allows for the Neo pad to self-level. And I know that if you are interested in this, and this is, I just have this in my notes, that 
If uh, I have pad sets on sale all this month, January of 2023. Ooh, look at that. This is. Well, let me, let me put good. it so it's the Neo Pad is upright. <laughs> but if you're if you're on the website, uh, there is a thing called like a Spud installation kit, which has the various. It's an assortment of the different size spuds. So if you need to adjust the height in your of pad protrusion on your instrument in particular keys, you can do that. And of course, the glue is also attached to the in the website there. So you got to get all three, the pad set, the glue, and the spud kit. Yeah. If I had to take a guess, I would say you could probably pad 200 horns with one bottle of this stuff. It goes a long way. Plus, you'll find other uses for it. Yes. So it does it, have a shelf life, though. So it does. Be aware of that. If it, so. if it goes, if it's not working good, just throw it out and get a new one. Yep, get a new one. Yes. So we've got it. Okay. So there we are. We're installed. We've got our 30 millimeter Neopad installed. You can see we're using our medium base. We have plenty of tilt now. It's done. Done. Really? Once wait, 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 what about, uh, we got to get a torch out. We nope. got to heat it up, nope. double it, pass Wrong. Lick. Incorrect. Uh, no. Just got to get our Erroneous. All, <laughs> all of that. Once you install Neopads, that's it. They're self-leveling as long as the pad cup is oriented properly over the tone hole, which you can do later. Okay. 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 You don't have to do it right away. Oh, you can check to see. I'll say, okay, now it levels. Well, let me orient it a little bit. I'll show you. Okay. So here we are. We're going to put our key back on. Put our key back on. Now, I see Murray is saying, while you're doing this, he said, um, I didn't realize that there's so many pad variations. Uh, smallest amount of tolerance. Well, Murray, with these pads, the tolerances are much wider. So on a traditional pad installation, yes, the smallest amount of tolerance uh is needed for it to be right where it belongs with the neopads you can be a little undersized with mm -hmm. the pads and they will still work and we'll show you that and russell is asking would you potentially get a half millimeter smaller than usual to ensure free movement yes absolutely yep yes okay all right oh, wait, here we are I, are you done i am i'm done it's installed it's done like it's done. I mean, I, we can check it if you want, but I, I, yeah, I want to check. You call me a liar, Let's but see. okay. So, but you haven't touched that. I haven't touched. Yet. I haven't touched it. I right. just installed it. Let me just point to it so everybody knows. It's this guy right here. All right. Let me bring it nice and close, and you're ready. Looks a little wonky. Let's see. Oh my goodness. Oh, just there done. it is. And I am using very light finger pressure. Okay. FYI. Level. Level. <laughs> let's let's just try something here. Let's let's just knock this guy. Hmm. There we go. Now you can see I, I've moved the pad. I can move it this way if you want. Actually, I'll do it this way. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. So now the pad is on level until right there. You just saw it, folks. It leveled itself. It's crazy. It's, it's, it really, it really is crazy. It's almost too good to believe. Now, Ryan, what if the what if the tone hole is you know if you have a pad that's kind of slightly undersized in the pad cup, but and the tone hole is really wide? That's a good question. Yeah, we've had guys ask about this before, and as long as the pad will cover the tone hole, it will work. Because there is you know you have your your tone hole, and maybe let's say the pad is pad cup is just a little bit wider. So there's a very small difference. Mm -hmm. And I know we're going undersized with our neopads, but as long as that neopad will cover the tone hole, it will seal. Um, the important thing to, to realize with this is it's because the neopads are so level. Mm. Okay, they're so level. And I, I had to ask to make sure I was able to divulge this information is that the neopads, the, the felt in here is a synthetic felt. Okay, so it's going to be very flat to begin with. The other thing is the way we manufacture that felt when we cut it out, um, it, it, we actually are cutting it out with a laser. So that hardens that edge just a little bit. I, I wouldn't say it hardens it like it's rough. I would say maybe a slight crust. Okay. Okay, a slight crust to them. So what that does is that creates a nice sharp edge right here. You'll see some pads that kind of just slope off. Yes. This has that nice, clear, defined corner um and because they are so flat it will work with a tone hole that is very close in size right. mm -hmm. so, okay okay very good so there we are now 
What about replacing? I would like to see. You'd like to see that? Yeah, I would like I to bet see you would. replacing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's, so let's see. Let's see how we're going to replace a Neopad. Let's see how easy it is. So they've, they've, they've changed this, whatever. The pad has gotten damaged for whatever reason. It's time to change their pad out. Yep. And oh, let me see. It looks like you're taking the key off there. Taking this key off. All right. Now, one thing that I could, in theory, I could replace this pad without taking this key off. If there's enough room. Okay. But, so you guys can see exactly what I'll do. Okay. So here we are. I've got my pad. I have a nice dental pick sent to us by our good friend, Norm. He oh. took our engraving course. He sent me this nice, nice dental pick I've been using to take out Neopads. And he also sent me this... Nice pair of pliers, which I believe are tooth pullers. So if Jeez. anybody needs some advanced, some amateur mm. dentistry, we're going to add it onto our courses here. Okay. When you're here for a course, I could remove a tooth or... I, see, I don't I, think I could put one in, but I could probably remove one fairly well. So exactly. thank you, Norm, for the, for the tooth pullers. Let's figure out uh, something to do with that. Rich, I'll need to see you yes. later about that, that tooth thing we were talking about. So, um, so let's talk about removing... A neopad. There's no heating from the bottom to loosen up the adhesive or whatever. All you need to do is find some kind of device to slip between the pad and the tone hole. I'm sorry, the pad uh, cup and the pad itself. I get underneath of it and I just pop it out. Like so. There it is. Oh. The spud still glued and I've just removed the pad. Huh. Can now, you... let's go ahead and replace it. Let's show you. I bet you'd like to see. Yeah, put that small pad in. Yeah, here it is. So remember, okay. guys, this is the one that was a little small. Okay. So I'm just going to remove the spud from the back. I'm going to line up. Again, I have my pin on the spud facing due north. I have my slot on the back of my pad also facing due north. And there it is. Now, you'll notice we do have a little bit of a gap, but we still have that tilting mm -hmm. let's see how this covers you ready Rich? yeah yeah I'm, I'm, you re are you I'm, ready for this you're the one that asked so I'm you better be ready if this is gonna work so oh and robert's asking will there be different resonators in the future uh we are working on a a metal resonator this right now it's just plastic because it's, it's an integrated resonator so okay will... so yep. i just installed the pad all right i haven't touched it Point it out. There it is. Okay. Are we ready? Let me get a nice good close-up. Here we go. We're going to close it. I wonder if it's going to level. Oh. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> oh, my Ugh. goodness. And you can see that that pad is very close to the size of the tone hole. But because, again, that synthetic felt, that laser cut synthetic felt is completely flat. Now, That's so let's cool. see what, what happens. Maybe I... I accidentally bump this. Okay, get a little a little off. There we are. We're bumped. There we are. Wonky. Wonky oh, ready. Yeah, definitely wonky. There it is. It still seals. And again, folks, I'm using very light finger pressure. And Murray's asking, oh, funny. Nice, Murray. He's asking, is there a mild variance in how much pressure is required for playing soft passages in a piece of music? Uh, Murray, I haven't noticed. I was going to say, you can answer this because you've had Neopads in your horn for seven months now. Yeah. yeah, no, I haven't noticed any sort of pressure variances of any kind. The only thing I've noticed is that if, uh, if the horn has been bumped and the pad kind of goes out of whack, I just hit the keys. I just go like this, thunk, 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 and then I'm ready to play again. It, it, yeah. That's, I mean, it's... And then I haven't noticed any sort of response issues unless the horn is out of adjustment. Mm -hmm. You know, if there's like, if the G sharp key is leaking or something, or uh, if the regulation between the bottom stack and upper stack is like, uh, I've played them long enough to where I've worn out some materials. Mm -hmm. That's when I've noticed some response changes. But the rest of the time, it's just, it's worked great. It does. Yeah. It really does. Yeah. The one thing I will also say is, these pads do not like self-level every time. So once they're in that position, they stay in that position. It's not like running with flip-flops where you're going to feel that flop, 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 flop. It's yeah. not floppy action. Yeah. So it does, there is a slight, very, very, very slight bit of friction that it, when it gets into a position, it, it stays kind of in there. It's not just moving around like this. Yeah. Okay. There is a little bit of friction. It does keep it in 
position. And these pads have a lighter feel, if you're wondering that. Mm -hmm. They don't have like a real hard feel. I like a hard pad, so I had to get used to the feel of these, but the benefits of the response being like a freshly overhauled horn. Every time, every for time. Months is, yeah. I, Look, you've padded your horn. Look, you've padded your <laughs> horn. Look, you pad it again. And and our friend Mr. Knight Rider said that it cuts the time in half. I would I would go as far as saying it might cut it by two thirds. Yeah, as yeah, absolutely. far as padding goes. Yep. Yep. Excellent. Well, if you are watching this, make sure that you take a uh, happy Neo year. Put that in the comments. Uh, that's going to enter you into 10% off any of the courses that we have coming up in 2023. And we, in our Basics for Saxophone course in February, uh, on February 20th, we'll also show you how to install Neopads, of course. And the Neopad sets on musicmedic.com are also on sale the entire month of January 2023. Nice. So just go to musicmedic.com and get your alto, tenor, baritone. Don't forget the spuds. And don't forget the spuds, spuds and the glue. set, spuds, and glue. And uh, if you guys have questions, uh, choo, 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 choo. I got only with the wear of the horn. I got gotcha. Yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you have other questions, put them in the comments below, or you can contact us at musicmedic.com. And if you need any dental work or anything like that, feel free to reach out or come take a course. Yeah. Not dental work in sex. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Not qualified. But. Oh, thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time. Oh, wait. Next week we'll be back with uh, a more advanced topic, uh, how to counterbore a post and yes. fit face. So stay tuned. Next week we'll be back. And until next time, happy pad, neopad year repairing. Happy neopad year. Yay.